afternoon. This is a bit different for me. I'm usually in there looking down here. Um, welcome to Lee, Mean and Green. So I've been sitting backstage and I've heard that you guys are actually very good at making a lot of noise and I'm, I'm going to need you to make some noise during this uh, session as well. Um, so let, let's have a bit of practice. What I actually need is a lot of cheering and applause, okay? It doesn't serve any purpose, just makes me feel better, okay? So after three, one, two, three. Brilliant. Right, that's it, I'm off, thank you. Right, um, so Lee, Mean and Green. Um, very important question for you, okay, um, to start off with. What's in your weekly shopping? Okay, so have a ponder. I've brought mine here. Okay, I don't know if this table's big enough, but I've got mine here. I've um, got some Coca Cola here. We've got some, uh, I'll get these out. I've got some broccoli. Uh, I'm an academic, so we have some wine, as you might imagine. Uh, steak and uh, all sorts of other things. We've got tofu, potatoes. We'll tip all this out because it'll come in handy later on. So, what can we do with this? That's the, uh, the question. So, what can you make at home? And uh, if I can just get it all out, there we go. Is that it? Oh, no. Mozzarella, don't forget that. Very important. So what, what can we make with it? Well, we could take some potatoes, if you wanted to. Any, any Jamie Olivers in the audience? Yeah. That is my culinary expertise takes me. I can, I can make some chips. That's about it. Okay, we could take some carrots and some tofu there, and if we're more health conscious, make ourselves a little, bro a little stir fry, a little broccoli stir fry. Um, what else have we got here? We've got some, some chocolate, so obviously we can make some chocolate cake and perhaps some chocolate sauce to go with it. Or the carrots there, instead of doing a stir fry, my personal favourite, a bit of carrot cake. So very mundane, usual stuff. Or we could just be a little bit more creative. Ladies and gentlemen, this, this is the world's first Formula 3 racing car, and, and everything you see on this table is actually in this car. Okay, so we've got all sorts of interesting things in there, and we'll, we'll talk about that a bit later on. So, what we were trying to do was combine sustainability and motorsport. Okay, not two natural bedfellows, I'll, I'll admit, and people didn't really understand why we were doing it. But, if we look at motorsport as a a sort of a, an industry, to the UK it's worth about £5 billion a year, of which 60% are actually exports, so you know, pro rata is actually quite a, a big part of our economy. It employs about 25,000 engineers, 15,000 uh, sort of supporting staff, and where we are here, we're right at the top of what's known as the motorsport cluster, and it runs all the way down to the southeast of England, and there's sort of three to 4,000 companies down there. So it's quite important to us as a, as, a, as a UK. However, people have started questioning its relevance to society because it used to be that things that you had on sort of racing cars would appear on your road car. And there's still sort of a, a perception that somehow happens. But the truth is, and since the 1950s and 60s, actually very little has actually made it from this sort of thing into what you drive. So we wanted to try and put back that re uh, relevance to society in motorsport. The other thing about it is the culture of innovation that exists within that industry allowed us to do some really wacky things that we perhaps couldn't do with a more traditional industry, so the automotive industry or the car industry, because they change their products so rapidly because they have massive amounts of reinvestment of profits going into their, their R&D that they constantly change their products, which gives us a chance to put things into cars like this for testing. Now, people say... Where on earth did you get the incentive for that from? And I say, well, we weren't the first to think of it, as you can see. Some other people there trying to do a bit of green transport. Um, not very practical. It's hell to mow. doesn't do very many miles to the gallon, and it's not very exciting. And then somebody else sprung to mind. Okay? It's, it's not easy being green. That was the, the premise we had. I mean, this hangs over in, in my office. Um, it's very easy to pretend to be green. And there's a lot of people and a lot of companies go around proclaiming green this, and, well, they're not. 
So we wanted to do something that was really, really green. And that's where the, the motivation for this came from. There are green motorsport initiatives, and you can see one here. There's lots of work being done on biofuels, on hybrids, on uh, fuel cell driven cars. But we wanted to go beyond the propulsion. We have done some propulsion stuff, but we wanted to go beyond the propulsion. We wanted to look at the whole car. So we've took away all the rule books and we started with a blank sheet of paper and started looking at things like how you drive it, where you drive it, what it's made from, what the tires are made from, everything. Just took, threw away the rule book. Now, this is what happens if it goes wrong. Okay, so being green is, is great and you actually have to make your materials work. Um, if, if we have an accident in this, it's no good, it's not much satisfaction to the person driving it as they're carted off to hospital saying, well, at least it was green. Um, what we actually need is materials that can perform to the same standard as the conventional materials. And that was actually what the real challenge was. And that's why this is called lean, mean and green. There's the car, okay, in case anyone can't see it at the back there. Now, this is where you guys come in. I need you to do a bit of cheering for me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up some products and I'm going to wander over to the car. And when you think I'm in the right place, start cheering, okay? And don't worry about what your neighbor's doing. If you think something, I want to hear you shouting it out, okay? So, we'll start off with some carrots, okay? So, have a think, have a look at the car. Whereabouts do you think carrots could be used on this car? Could they be in the tires? Anyone? Hey, a lone voice over there. You're either incredibly brilliant or not, one of the two. Okay. Could it be in the bodywork? Come on, guys. I need, I need some proper cheering. There's no... Uh, uh, no. Right, okay. What about in the steering wheel? Oh, we're split there. Right, okay. Actually, it's the steering wheel. If I could take this off. This is a carrot fibre steering wheel. Okay. So, if you imagine, the carrots are essentially what's technically known as lignose cellulose. Okay, so say they're essentially cellulose fibers bound together by lignin. Cellulose fibers are actually very, very strong. They're, they're what a tree is. And when you, as anybody, anybody who makes soup here will know, when you sort of blitz up the soup and pulp it, if you pass it through a sieve, you get left with a load of sludge. And what that sludge is, is cellulose. Now, cellulose, unfortunately, as it gets longer and longer, actually develops faults. So it actually starts becoming uh, not very good for engineering applications. But what you can do is then break it down into nanofibers or nanofibrils even. And if you're going to really, really tiny, you can go to nanocrystals. And those are very, very strong individually. So that's what we did. We took nanofibers and we then bind them in a resin, heat, compression, and you have yourself a steering wheel. A little bit heavier than a carbon fiber steering wheel, but um, nowhere near the footprint, the environmental footprint of, of a carbon fiber variant. So there, there's carrots in this car. It's known as the carrots, and the livery might sort of give that bit away. Okay, so what else? We've got tofu. Interesting choice of product. It's like Marmite. You either love it or hate it. So who thinks tofu could be used in the tires? Okay. Who thinks tofu could be used somewhere in the engine? Who thinks tofu could actually be used in the seat? Yeah. It is. It is. A, uh, hopefully, I've got one back here. It is actually used in the seat. This is, this is the proper racing seat from this car. And it's made of flax at the back here instead of carbon fiber. Flax is linen, so it's what this tablecloth's made of. And the foam is actually derived from soya beans. So it's a polyurethane foam that we make from soya beans. So it's tofu. I suspect this probably tastes a little better than tofu, but uh, it's, it's the same sort of derivative. And finally, this car is either known as the carrot car or the chocolate car. So whereabouts is chocolate used in this car? Is it in the side pods? That's a resounding no. Could it be in the tires? Is it in the engine? It's actually the fuel it runs on. Um, chocolate is fat, as most of us can attest to. And strangely, if you mix fat with certain alcohols, so in our instance, wine, I, I hasten to add, we actually blended waste chocolate with waste wine, which was a revelation to me, because I didn't know there was such a thing as, as that. 
you create something called, a, you, you create a form of biodiesel. Now, biodiesel is normally vegetable oil. It can be vegetable oil, it can be other fatty products mixed with methanol. And you create something called fatty acid methyl esters. What we actually created was with waste wine and off wine, and it's ethanol. So what we created was fatty acid ethyl esters. Created a very energy rich fuel. So at race speed, this car does 18 miles to the gallon. Now, if you compare that to a conventional car of the similar nature, which does eight, you can see you're getting an immediate advantage. So not only are you using waste materials that are greener, you're getting a technical advantage because you can go for twice as long or go out with half as much fuel. So those are three of the highlights. And actually, if you look at the dots on the screen here, each one of those is a green technology that was introduced onto this car that had never been seen before and could easily be used on your road cars. Um, for example, the aluminium uh, in the Coke cans was actually used to make a low, uh, a low weight wiring loom, which actually has better conductivity than copper. The steak, you can actually make fuel with, it's beef fat, we have done that. We did actually make it with uh, salmon as well, but that absolutely stank, so we don't use that too often. Um, so yes, yeah, so there's lots of green tech on there, and, and the idea was to actually outperform the, the existing technology that was around. One of the more interesting ones is carbon fiber. Everyone's heard of carbon fiber. You may, if you play tennis, you probably have a carbon fiber racket. If you go skiing, you may have carbon fiber skis. If you own very posh cars, you may have some carbon fiber trim in them or, or uh, part of the seats or things like that. We're now making airplanes out of carbon fiber, big sort of jumbo jets, half of it are carbon fiber. And one of the great things about carbon fiber is it's absolutely indestructible, which gives us a slight problem when we want to get rid of it. It also has an absolutely horrific energy footprint. It is one of the worst materials that you can actually make. It has, it, the whole process is highly energy intensive. So the carbon footprint of carbon fiber, unsurprisingly, is not very good. So what we were doing was working with some companies looking at recycling it. And I'll be honest with you, the only way to recycle it is to put it through a very hot oven, which again doesn't sound particularly energy friendly, and burn off the resin and you get left with one of three different types of carbon fiber. You get left with either a, a wool type material, which is not very easy to use. You can end up with a, a non-woven material, which looks a bit like cotton wool rather than sort of balls of wool. Or you can, if you're very clever, you can actually come back out with a woven fabric, and that's what we did with this car. And it's used in various different parts of it. Some of it's used with, um, believe it or not, recycled plastic from sort of vegetable oil bottles. And the car itself is lubricated with vegetable oil. And what you can actually do is create parts that have got a fraction of the embodied energy so, uh, and don't end up having to go into the ground. So what we have here is two components. These are actually crash structures. So in this nose cone is this in here. And if you are unfortunate enough to drive it into a wall, this is what stops you breaking your legs, hopefully. The one on the left is a virgin carbon fiber component. The one on the right is a component made from the recycled carbon. If I could tell you, this one costs about 100 pound a square meter to uh, buy. This one, people pay to get rid of that material. And as I say, the embodied energy in that material is a fraction of what it is in this one. And the thing to watch here, this is a video, it's going to start, that will be driven in at very high speed into the, into the bottom there. To give you an idea of the speed, this is one picture every six thousandth of a second. So it's incredibly high speed simulation. And what you'll notice is that it behaves exactly the same. And the thing to note is the two metal bits at the top go to the same uh, position as the video runs. So here it goes, hopefully. And as you can see, they look absolutely identical. So it gives us a really good engineering material. Having said all that, does it actually run? That's the other question. We always get asked, is it a model? Does it work? And the answer is yes, of course it does. Okay, we've had great fun driving her, and uh, this is a Goodwood Festival of Speed. For those of you who've never been there, Goodwood has 250,000 people descend on a stately home in the south of England, and they watch cars drive up hills for sort of a weekend. Um, this guy driving this car is a guy called Adam Carroll. He was A1 GP world champion at the time, so he was a pretty hardcore motor racer. And he took her up the hill in the same time as Michael Schumacher's F1 car, just to put that into context. 
So we've got real performance. We've got a fraction of the embodied energy of a traditional motor, uh, racing car, and we've got a fraction of the carbon footprint as well. But we've still got as much fun. Interestingly, she's also virtually silent, which makes for other interesting uh, things for racetracks who can't actually run cars anymore because of noise laws. So the thing is, being green isn't good enough. You really do have to be lean, mean, and green. And I hope you've seen that from today. Um, have a look at her on the web. There's plenty of information there for her. And, and I, always I always like, like to, finish to finish by letting, by letting the, car the car itself, itself do the talking. talking. Uh, leave the final word to her. her. She does actually go. 0 to 60 in less than 3 seconds. Top speed of 165 miles an hour and 18 to the gallon. Not bad for a pile of rubbish and food. Thank you. Thank you.